All right. For those of you who don't catch how to finish this lab, here's what's going to happen for you to finish it. These first three numbers, whenever in math you see this column over here where you've got like T at 10 with a line over it, that T at 10 with a line, anything in math with a line over it like this, that just means an average. So what you're going to do with the first three numbers in every one of these categories is average these three numbers and put in this first blank over here. So like for me, my first category of numbers is going to be uh, 10.25 plus 10.34 plus 10.31. We'll add those up, 30.9, and divide by 3 for an average of 10.30. Now, I'm not doing any calculations yet because I want those calculations. Uh, all we'd have right now pretty much would be like some easy ones, and doing an average one is not hardly hard enough to make an average out of. So anyway, but this first category is just going to be nothing but averages. The second line, this big T that you see, that big T is known as period, and in the world of physics, period is the time for one oscillation. So the period is the time for one oscillation. So what it is is this. In lab, you all timed ten oscillations. Well, the thing is, reality is we only wanted time for one. We wanted time for it to do this. Go over and back one time. That's what we wanted the time for in lab. But anyway... It would have been kind of hard just to time one single swing over and back, so I had you time ten swings of the pendulum. So you time the ten swings of the period. So all we have to do now is take that time and divide by ten. I could have picked five swings, six, eight, but we don't need a calculator. If we're just going to divide by ten, that means this period is 1.030. So that made the math kind of easy. So the first two columns are really easy to fill in. The last column is going to be the one that makes a little higher chance. And so to do that last problem is going to be the portion of the video where I get out a scratch sheet of paper. I'm going to pull this one way down here. And on my scratch paper, now I'm going to write the top. I'm going to write sample calculations. And I'm going to write the name and date, if I were a student, over in the right-hand corner of that paper. And now what I'm going to do is write the equation we're going to be using to find gravity. Because the whole purpose of this lab is this. What made the bob fall? It was gravity. Gravity is what brought it down and returned it every single time. So... By that fashion, we should be able to measure gravity. And that's the purpose of this lab, is to measure gravity at Ramburn High School, if we were writing the report right now. The purpose of this lab is to measure gravity at Ramburn High School. Anyway, there's my television voice for this video. Anyway, so what we're going to do here is this. Uh, the equation we're going to use is G equals... 4 pi square L over T square. Now, I could uh, show you how to derive that equation, but I'll do that live and in person, not via video. But anyway, all I'm going to do to find gravity is take my numbers. So for my first problem, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get... 4 times pi squared times L. My first L is 0.25 for my first run of data. So times 0.25 meters, that's going to be over big T, which was this column called period, 1.030, 1.030 seconds. That's squared. Most people that mess up this calculation forget to do the square on the bottom. So don't forget to do the square on the bottom. So we'll set this equal 
and we'll grab a calculator out. So, grabbing my calcula, trusty calculadora here, I've got 4 times pi squared times 0.25 on top. And I hit equals, so I got 9.86. Divided by 1.030 square on bottom, I got a final answer of, and this is the thing, sig fig wise, because of that 0.25 is only two figures, my sig figs are just going to be two. So my answer is just 9.3 meters per second square. So that's how I find my gravity. Now, I've got my gravity over here. Now I'll give you a hint. If you did the lab right, all your answers should be in this 9 to 10 range. Uh, if you get anything too extreme, now if you just did a bit job in lab, you might get 8, 9, 10, 11, maybe even 12 by the time you're around. If you get any number outside of that range, you probably messed up doing your calculation. I'll give you a hint. Your first run of numbers should all be around 10 if you did the lab right. A lot of people only count for 9 swings instead of 10, and that messes up their lab. Now, if you figure out that you mistimed it and only did 9, no big deal. But instead of dividing by 10 on this step, you need to just divide by 9, and you can salvage the lab. Now, you're going to do these same calculations all the way down the table. You don't have to show them. This is called sample calculations. So this page is going to have nothing but that for now. So you can run through your calculator, changing the length, using your times, and you should end up 9.7, 9.9, 10.2, 9.1. Let's say this one was a really bad one. You got 10.5 on it. You should end up with 6 Gs. When you get those six G's, look at this next column. It's a G with a line above it. That means this is an average. So for this last column, take an average of those six numbers, 9.3 plus 9.7 plus 9.9 plus 10.2 plus 9.1 plus 10.5, which technically should have been 11 with sig figs, so I messed that one up divided by 6, is an average of 9.8. Oh my goodness, I'm awesome. I randomly guessed six numbers and they actually came out to the real answer. So my lab will be perfect. So, you get your answer for gravity. Mine just happens to be 9.8, which is gravity. Now, you'll finish this lab up by doing a percent error calculation. Percent error is equal to E minus A over A times 100. Now, the experimental value, that's what you found in lab. That's what comes from this column. So when you do the lab, this column with the G with the line over it, that's going to be your E. Now, A is... 9.8. That's what gravity really is, is 9.8. So you're going to go take your number minus 9.8, absolute values over 9.8 times 100, and that's going to be your percent error for the lab. Now, because I'm so good at making numbers, mine's actually 9.8 minus 9.8 which is 0%. So for my lab, my percent error is a whopping 0%. I refuse to make mistakes. <laughs> At least on video. Anyway, so that's how you're going to do the calculations to finish your lab. And the great thing about video is you can pause and even replay. But thank you for watching. You have a great day, America. Channel 8 loves you.